I mark pictures. Way to wear it. Tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. What's up carp freaks and welcome to episode 21 of the challenge. Now as this is episode 21 we have a 21 themed challenge and that challenge is Mark has to play the popular card game Blackjack. Every hand Mark plays he has to catch a carp over the size of the numbers combined. For example for seven and nine, Mark would have to catch a carp of 16 pounds or over. Mark has to keep catching carp until he gets 21. Then to pass the challenge, Mark must catch a carp weighing 21 pound or over. Okay, that makes sense. One thing though, if Mark busts, Harry can confiscate an item or tackle from him. Now you like doing that, don't you? You've done that before. Now, it's been a long time since we filmed the last challenge. This is long overdue. We have had several dates planned for filming that have obviously been canceled because of the current situation. But as you can imagine, I am so pumped for this. I can't wait. So let's go for a walk around the lake and hopefully we can find a car or two. So for this challenge, I have come to Kislingbury Syndicate in Northamptonshire, where we've very kindly been given permission to fish. Now I have actually fished this lake once before, about five or six years ago, but it was a very, very different place then. So in effect, I feel like I'm almost starting from new. The lake itself is about 14 acres in size. You've got this open water area behind me, then you've got an island, which splits the lake up into various sections. So there's lots of places where the fish can hide. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of that right now because so far I've not seen anything. Is that a fish? I think it must have been. Yeah, it was. One's just shown there. It's the first one I've seen. Oh, grebes are great looking birds, but they do piss me off. Look at that. They always, they always pop up just at that stage where you think, yeah, it can't, it can't have stayed down under the water for that long. It'd be dead, wouldn't it? You, it's, <laughs> If, it, if, if, it's, if it's not come back up now, it's never coming back up. It was definitely a fish, definitely a fish. Up it pops. Ah, oh, wow. <laughs> Do it every time, don't they? Fair play to them. Yeah, the same bird can fool you at least three or four times. Like now, you think there. Definitely a fish, definitely a fish. Oh, and it was a grieve that just popped up over there. <laughs> fair play to them, fair play. Oh. 
I just seen one show right down there. Actually a fish this time. Came right out the water. And again, but a different fish, it was way away. So I've seen two fish show. So at the other end of the lake. Not the same fish, they were about 80 yards apart, so. Well, this is the area where I saw those two fish show when I was at the other end of the lake. And I've been stood in here now for about five, 10 minutes. And in that time, I've seen two more fish show, which is good because in the one hour that I was walking around the lake before that, I saw just one of the carp elsewhere on the lake. And it stands to reason why they would be here. We've got the island to the left of the swim there, that big overgrown island. And then we've got a big overgrown, no fishing bank to the right. And all this water here is only accessible by this one swim. No, there's no other swims along there. So no one else can interfere with me. And I've got a big chunk of water, more water than any other swim has in front of them. So this is as good a starting point as any. So let's get that van unloaded and get going. With a few fish visibly in the area, I chanced my arm at a quick bite. I set up with inline leads and short reflex hook lengths to fit neatly inside the solid bags I was going to begin with. Tying the bags was made easy with the use of the Rapide system, dropping my rig and pellets, twisting, licking and sticking the PVA to itself. The bags were cast to the areas where I had seen the most activity and with the bobbins clipped on, I could celebrate the beginning of this challenge in the right and proper manner. Tea and scones. Scone, scone, scone jam cream time. That's what I'm thinking, you've. Cream, jam, scone. Cream, scone, and jam. So I've been fishing half an hour and haven't caught anything. So I'm feeling a bit down. So I've decided the best pick me up I can have is a cream tea and then get back to work, really. A cream tea on the bank. I've never seen it done, therefore it hasn't happened. <laughs> a picnic hamper and a cream tea whilst carp fishing. That's so passion for angling, isn't it? For the fact that they never even get a cream tea. Yeah, well, you know. I bet they look back on them videos and kick themselves now. So we've got some Earl Grey. Taste the difference Sainsbury's scones. Not just any old shit. That's, that's my safety zone. <laughs> Get back. Do you want one of my decaf Earl Greys, which are actually oh. pretty decent? No. Yorkshire Gold. Ooh, I remember them bad boys. Those were happy times. The only good thing I had in my life back then. <laughs> Apart from my children. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, it's, so that's got it's got the tea bag in now. I think we can do it. That's okay. That that works. Oops, sorry. Oh, no. Right, you ready? I've been practicing the shit out of my high paw these past few weeks. Look at that. Suck on that. You're doing very well with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to spill a drop, don't you worry about that. You've got a bit of a ridge coming Don't up. worry, I've got this in hand. I'm not going to spill a drop. There you go. And that's how you social distance at brew time. There you go. Perfect. Keep away. <laughs> well, if you're going to take any equipment off me, make sure it's not the scones. <laughs> I can put it on that. It's risky. I mean, that is proper. <laughs> that that's, is risky. that's edgy, isn't it? I'm not, you're that's not the, doing it on that. Pass me your tea box, and I'll put them inside the tea box, and then push your tea box. <laughs> oh, 
this is this is good. That's that's what we want. Don't push the box over. Oh, it's on a ridge. Yes. <gasps> You've got it. That'll do. I've got it. I've got it. I've got got it. it. Stop pushing it. Stop pushing. No, it's not two meters. <laughs> there. After devouring the scones and going back for seconds on the Earl Grey, it was time to get on with the first round of blackjack. So now the rods are in the water. I think it's time that we played cards, so I know what size fish I have to catch. So, let's play blackjack. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, to do this in a responsible way yeah. and maintaining social distancing, I don't have the appropriate PPE to be able to pass these to you without giving you coronavirus. Okay. So, I'll basically just put these on the floor yeah. and we'll play it like open. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so everyone can see. Right, so there are the cards. You ready? Yeah. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> that is a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Okay. Yeah? You ready for the next one? Yeah, go on. Be a little one, be a little one, be a little one. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, that would actually be a very good hand. I'd imagine. It, it would in, under normal circumstances, mm. but in this instance, it's not the best no. hand. So that's a 20 pounder. I need to catch a 20 pounder. Or you could try and twist to get 21. So you just do it straight away, knock it out the park. So I need a one or an ace. That That is the only, you, there aren't ones in cards it starts at two you get an ace and then a two oh dear <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> i've only ever played snap <laughs> that's it frozen snap with my girls okay okay so and obviously if you go bust i get to take an item of tackle off of you Okay. Uh, I wouldn't be lucky enough for that to be an ace. Yeah, I'll stick. Yeah. Should we find out what you could have? No. What it could have been? No. We don't right, need to. Do we don't need to know. 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 Are you sure? Yeah, we don't need to know. Let's find out. Oh, Ooh, good call. Yeah. Good call. It was a good call. Look at that, king, queen, king. Yeah. Somebody didn't shuffle these very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to catch a 20 pounder. I better really start trying. So far, I've just done two strategically placed pub chucks. I think I better actually start <laughs> trying. Right. It would have been nice to get a quick bite, but it, it, see, now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in two minds, whether I just, going forward, keep getting dealt hands until I get 21 and keep losing kit, but know that I may only need to catch one fish and it'd be a 21 pounder and have hardly any kit to do it with, or catch a few fish first, see how the cards fall, the cards lie. So I think, yeah, I think now I'm gonna play it safe, but the longer it goes on, the more desperate I'll be. But the longer it goes on, the less I'm gonna need my kit and I can perhaps afford then to not have a bivvy, a bed chair, my scones. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. All right, cool. So I want to reel in the pub chucks. And get started. And get started, yeah. Okay. <laughs> When you're 
So I've had a change of plan for the night ahead. I have reeled in the pub chucked PVA bags and instead I have put the leading rod to good work. I have found a really nice area at about 20, well just over 20 wraps off to the right of the swim. There's a nice big clean gravel area uh, and it is an area where I've seen fish too and surrounded, uh, surrounded by that is uh, um, eel grass and blanket weed so it's a nice big clean area and hopefully it's clean because the fish have fed there and kept it clean. I have put around 20 spots of bait over there, uh, a mixture of corn and 10 mil Pacific tuna boilies and instead of the solid PVA bag inline setup I have instead swapped over to a lead clip. Um, I have here the new camo slick lead clip and naked line tail rubber. Because the water is so clear, I think I said water. <laughs> you did say water. <laughs> because the water here is so incredibly clear, uh, this lead clip pattern really does blend in very, very well on the lake bed. Um, I have a three and a half ounce Exocet lead and the rig itself, that's just a simple blowback rig constructed from 25 pound Camatex Soft. Then at the sharp end, I have a size four curved short hook. Over the eye there, I have a tungsten flipper to help the hook turn and improve the hooking properties. I have a small rig ring tie just below the barb um, to create a blowback effect. And the hook bait is a yellow Northern Special Wafter which is kind of going some way to match the hatch with the sweet corn free offerings. So that's the setup. Let's get it out in the pond. So that's it, all the rods are in place. I've got two rods on a spot at just over 80 yards off to the right of the swim. That was that clear area in amongst the weed. And I found a really small clear area, very, very small clear area. Um, it's probably no more than, oh, I said, two or three feet wide. It's like a very narrow strip, again, in the weed and um, that was off to the left of the swim and i've just put uh, four spots of corn and boily on that and uh, the same rig and set up uh, over the top so yeah nothing's happened yet not heard any fish not had any indications at all i'm not too confident of a nighttime bite if i'm honest i think if it is going to happen I think it'll be early morning. So uh, right now I'm going to hit my sack. And uh, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Hit your sack. Well, it's yeah, it's my sack. <laughs> I'm going to hit it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there's nothing wrong. That's a perfectly fine saying. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to hit that. And uh, hopefully, 
I see you in the morning with a big fat carp. Well, a carp of 20 pounds and over, hopefully. The first slight bite I had been hoping for never materialised, but confident in my spot, I sat on my hands, hoping the fish would drift back in as the day wore on. Well, good morning. It's about eight o'clock, I think. And as you can see, I'm playing a fish. This bite came right out of the blue. I was awake this morning at, at first light. I'd seen a few fish, but nothing that really got me that excited. But I, I did sort of feel like as the morning wore on, there would be a better chance of a bite and thankfully that has proved to be the case. I've actually been playing this fish for quite a while but um, Harry wasn't here to film, he was having a poo. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cheers, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. People want to know what goes on when we're... A lot of people want to know what goes on when we're filming. I've already seen it once. I only got a glimpse that it came past this tree here. I think it's close. This one feels like he's now cut down to his fighting weight because it's really, really pulling. Oh, I'd lost it then. <laughs> you saw that, yeah? Oh, that's a sickening feeling, isn't it? That's quite clearly a 20 pounder. <laughs> My heart's pounding now. Now I've seen it properly, now I know it's a 20 pounder. Get in. Yes! Oh, that is a relief. Just to get up and run and get off the mark. Oh, I'm so pleased with that. And it's, yeah, it's over 20 pounds for sure. It's a nice fish. What a start! That's my little wafter rig with a camo lead clip set up. Right 
I always remember to check that the fish's fins are flat against its body. Its tail's not bent or anything like that. Before lifting the net out of the water, then no harm can come to him at all. So I've already zeroed the sling on the scales. And remember, this must be over 20 pound if it's to have any effect on this challenge. And we can have the next hand of cards. And it is... No way. <laughs> oh, that's close. 20 pound, three ounces. I thought that fish was much bigger. I thought that was about 22, 23 pound. I thought it was well clear of that mark. But like I said before, they have just spawned. But either way, it's, it's over 20 pounds, so it doesn't matter. Oh, look at this cool pex. Proper rounded. Rounded pex, then. Let's get a photo of that for Instagram. That will rock Instagram, that will. So this challenge is finally up and running. But this bite did take a long time in coming, if I'm honest. But you can imagine how pleased I feel right now that we are finally off the mark. And this fish is, of course, over the 20 pound mark, which means I now get to have another chance of blackjack. He's an awesome fish. He's got really cool, rounded pecs. I did think this fish was much bigger, though. I thought this was around 23 maybe 24 pound but i'm not bothered that he's just over 20. that's that's the important mark that he has to be over 20 pound With one fish now under my belt, I felt particularly buoyant. After checking the rig, wrapping the rod back up and firing it back out to the spot, of course, the next thing to do was to enjoy a celebratory brew, but the fish had other ideas. Yes. Yeah. Well, you were just saying that you think that there's another chance of a bite. Up yeah, there. I didn't think it would come quite that quick. <laughs> oh, we haven't even played blackjack. I think we need to play it now. Quick, do it now. <laughs> Get it. Get it. Quick. <laughs> right, hold on. I need to put the camera down so I can shuffle. <laughs> This is going. Yeah, it feels yeah. good. So yeah, basically we didn't even have a chance to do the next hand of cards. I'd cast the rod back out, just put the kettle on, and we were just about to do the, Harry was just about to deal the next hand, and the rod ripped off. It's only been in the water about 10 minutes, and it's really motoring. I'm not liking this, it's right near them trees. Give it the butt, you'll be all right. Okay, your first card is a six. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Your second card is a six, so you're on 12, stick or twist. Sick. <laughs> you're sticking on 12? Go on, I'll, I'll do it again. What, twist? twist? No, stay, no, st I'll stay on 12. Oh, okay, all right, fine. Oh, no. Yeah, it's right, oh, I've just seen it. No. Oh, no. oh, it's coming, it's coming right now. I can't tell. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, whoo! I was lucky, I was right at the back of that tree on the island. That was so lucky. So I've hooked the fish at just over 80 yards to the right of the swim. And when I picked up the rod, it went on a, a big long run. It just went, <laughs> it probably took about 40 or more yards of line. Now, as it's come back towards me, it started kiting left all the time it's been coming in. And as it's been coming in, it's been going along the, 
along the island, along them branches. There's so many snags and things along the island. And it's managed to skirt pretty much every snag, but avoid getting in any of them. That's a real stroke of luck. So when I cast this rod back out a short while ago, I just cast the rod, just cast it out as a single hook bait. I didn't top up the swim at all. And it is important to know when and when not to bait up. I put out quite a lot of bait on that spot last night and put two rods on it just probably 10 feet apart. And I did feel like there was a good chance of, of another bite. But had I have started introducing bait, topping up with, with more spots landing on top, I think that disturbance would have just pushed the fish away. So it was just a case of one cast, rod back out on the spot, minimal disturbance, and then 10 minutes later it's rattled off. On deeper venues, you can perhaps get away with spotting on top of fish. The disturbance is obviously above them. But where I'm fishing there, it's so shallow, it's probably only, I'm not even getting a drop, it's probably only four feet deep, something like that. And in shallow water like that, it's, uh, I think spotting on top of fish is just a recipe for disaster. So the fish has just gone left down this margin. There's a quite a big bush that goes out into the lake. The line had just gone through the branches. It was grating horribly. But as I've come out, I've managed to ping the line off the branch. And it feels a lot more normal now. Is he going to be bigger than 12 pound? Is he going to be bigger than 12 pound? That is a nice fish. That is a nice fish. Yeah, he's bigger than 12 pound. I think before spawning, that will have been uh, significantly larger. Look at the head on it. That's an epic looking fish. Having his chance of another bite as well. I want to get this rod straight back out there. This, yesterday seemed to be a lot more activity in this swim mid-morning when we arrived than what we saw at first light. And the water is so shallow. So I, I do think there's a chance of a, of a day bite off there. Just it's a morning bite. Yeah, oh. It's not a day bite. What are the, what are the parameters? Afternoon, after noon, 12 noon, that's day. So, after, so the afternoon is the day, yeah, and the morning is the morning. Yeah, it makes sense. But it's not the day. A day bite, daytime, daytime bites. Afternoon bites. Afternoon bites, then. Yeah. So it needs to be over 12 pound, yeah? Yeah. No way! 11... <laughs> 26, nine. 26 pound, nine ounces. <laughs> I'm really, really, really happy with that. Really happy with that. Now that is an awesome looking carp. He's got some really cool old scars on him. And when I saw this fish pop up, I was certain it was gonna be a 30 pounder. And I'm sure just a few weeks ago before they spawned, this fish will have been very, very close, if not over the 30 pound mark. But a 26 and a half pound, I'm certainly not complaining. And with every fish that I catch, I am that one step closer to passing the challenge, I feel. And right now, I don't really want to be sacrificing any kit. I just want to try and get as many, many hands of cards dealt without losing any kit so I can fish at the best of my ability. Because I think if I can keep these fish coming, sooner or later, I might hopefully get a blackjack. I'm going to celebrate with a scone. So 
So we've just cast the rod back out. And I just turned to Harry and said, you know what? I think there's a really good chance of another bite here. Two seconds later, <laughs> it ripped off. And once again, we haven't done the, we haven't been dealt the next hand of cards. Bad, you better do it again. <laughs> so where I am here, there's a bit of a, a point that comes round and the fish has gone so far right. Oh, this is horrible. I think I'm gonna have to, I think I need to get in the water again. What are you doing? I am gonna have to get the waders on. Come on then, get shuffling and doing. I'm shuffling. Right, you ready? Yeah, go on. A two. two. <laughs> Again. A king. So you're on 13. No, I'm not. No, yeah, that's brilliant <laughs> math, that. You're on, you're on 12. Go on, do me again. Yeah. Do me again. Do me again. Do me again. 19. 19. Stick okay, or twist. I'll stay on 19. Staying on 19. Right. right. I'll see you later. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going round here after them. So the fish had gone right round this corner here. So I had to uh, get the waders on, go after him. So okay, he's coming back round now. He's sort of stuck in a little bit of a little bit of light weed at the moment, but he's he's coming quite freely now. Well, there he is. He's coming in upside down and back to front and all sorts here. Here he comes. Head up. Come on. Oh, no, not now. Yes, we got him. Oh, that's another. I've got him. It's another really nice looking fish. He's upside down now. I'm not sure if it's 19. I think it's close. Right. I think it's close. Looks more 18s, I reckon. I reckon it's close, but we'll see. What a, what a morning's fishing. Yeah, good here, isn't it? So I need this fish to be 19 pound if I'm to have another hand of cards, but as much as I would like it to be, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think it's touch and go. Nineteen <laughs> seven. <7. laughs> Hold on, lift that up again so I can see. <laughs> well, it's so far so good. Three fish, and I've managed to beat the target every time so I've kind of passed three mini challenges within the challenge and I feel like I'm really cooking on gas right now I think there's I think there's a chance of more fish today yeah time for one more there's time for a few more than one more <laughs> one fish at a time that's really silty. Just that one little bit. After casting back out, I decided to give it another hour without topping up with bait, in the hope there would still be carp in the zone. I brewed up and finally could play blackjack from a place of calm and focus. Surely this time I could get the cards I needed. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Six again. Okay, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Nine. Fifteen. Oh. 
Okay. 15. That's a tricky one. I think, I think the longer that this goes on for, I should start playing hands as well. And so not only do you have to not go bust, but you also have to beat me. That would have made more sense to do it from the beginning, really. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing as we're not doing that right now. Well, well we can do that right now. Um, we can't now because these have been dealt, but I think moving forward, I think that's what I'm going to do. Is it? Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was, I'm going to stick with that for the time being. You're going to stick with because that? Because I don't want to potentially lose a bivvy or bed chair tonight. If I get a fish early morning, then I'm going to start being a bit more gung-ho. I can afford to lose tackle, I think, tomorrow morning. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to stick with that this time, but after that, I'm going to throw more caution to the wind. Okay. Which I think is a good game plan of mine. What would the next card have been? Let's have a look. Go on then. Oh, never! <laughs> <laughs> no, what? <laughs> oh, sh no way. Oh. <laughs> and it's going to be hard to get another sequence of cards like that. <laughs> oh, we could have it wrapped up. Next fish. Wouldn't have to give anything up. Oh, never. Nah, I'll do it again. Easy. 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 Think positive. I can tell I'm not a gambling man. I like it so you can, so you give me the cards and I say, as he got glasses, you say no, then I put one card down, then I say, as he got a moustache. <laughs> That's, That's a different, different game. Different game. It's a different game. <laughs> I always win at that, it's great. <laughs> With the afternoon sailing by, it was now time to get some munger out on the dance floor. I repeated the process from the night before with 15 to 20 spots of corn and Pacific tuna, hoping for a repeat performance in the morning. You go in camp without remorse, without heart, in your head, you're right, but in my head, you are the bad. I want to show to the world that you're the bad one, you always being bad. I also rechucked all three of my rods, but this time I decided to put all three of them on that one productive spot. Two were baited with the successful yellow northern special wafters, and one on a pink, just because I've always been a big fan of the pink. Right, so I've got the rules. Mm -hmm. I will now, moving forward, deal you two cards face up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'll deal, deal me two cards. One will be face up, so you will know it, and one will be face down, so you don't know it. How's that work? Well, I'm the dealer. So the dealer has an advantage. Says who? Set the rules of blackjack. You're talking out your ass. That's not how it works at all. I've seen Casino Royale, and <laughs> that that doesn't happen. No. You're talking bollocks. It doesn't work like that. No, because the dealer has the advantage, doesn't he? Why? Well, how is that fair? You have to beat the dealer. Well, how can you beat the dealer when he knows what cards I've got? That's that's wrong. That, that, that doesn't happen at all. There's no way that, that happens. happens. Why would anyone play that game? It's I have them face down, you have them face down. No. That's, that can't be right, that. It is. All players' cards are dealt face up so that everyone can see all the values. The dealer's first card is also an up card, though their second is usually dealt face down or a whole card. I don't understand that game. So everyone, if everyone knows what everyone's got, 
Yeah, that does, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you play it. What a load of sh <laughs> That's... It's a crap game, isn't it? Really? What's the point in that? What do they play in Casino Royale? That's not Blackjack, is it? I don't know. Do they play cards? Yeah. Pretty much the main thing that happens in it, really. That's, that's who that is. Yeah. Daniel Craig playing cards. <laughs> it does seem sh though, doesn't it? Seriously. So what's strip poker? <laughs> <laughs> what are we playing? Oh, Blackjack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> poker. That's what I'm thinking of. Was that what they were playing in? Casino I don't know. Around? Maybe. It wasn't strip poker. <laughs> At no point did I see Daniel Craig's penis. But he won. He didn't he? No, that was a different Bond where he, he could get did. He did. He did. Was it Casino Royale? He yes. It was that one. It was t tri tied, tied to it. Yeah, proper bondaged up. Alice would have loved that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Having got no further with truly understanding the rules of this game, we both give up. Had a cheeky cloudy lemon cider and a barbecue and let the night draw in. Uh -oh. I'm feeling a little bit tense. Harry has thrown a curveball into this challenge where I now have to play against him. A blackjack and yeah that makes things a little bit more uncomfortable it's not quite as plain sailing as it was earlier on and potentially that could make things uh, uncomfortable for me also going into tomorrow night but I'll worry about that when it happens but for now I'm gonna get my head down and I'll be up early in the morning and hopefully I'll be holding a big fat cap <laughs> I think this is the first time that we've ever filmed you drinking during the challenge. Has like has the lockdown got to you and you've started now dr <laughs> just drinking constantly? I don't think cider counts as alcohol, does it really? Very rarely I've seen you drink on the bank. Yeah, in recent time, maybe since lockdown, I think I have had more drinks on the bank quite carp in quite a carpy way very very passion for angling style drinking though not like drinking just f passion for angling carpy drinking a picnic basket bottle of wine two glasses rods in the water for an evening session that's pretty carpy and i've continued that since i've come back to england i have a picnic hamper that's not a pink picnic hamper. That's a, a picnic hamper. It's not, that's a blue cool box. A bright blue cool box that I've made you hide in your bivvy because it's garish. Well, it's nothing like Passion for Angling. Passion for Angling was filmed 93. These weren't invented then. So they might have had, they had a wicker basket with wine, glasses, probably cheese. I'm guessing they had cheese. Maybe some meats. <laughs> and this is the modern day equivalent of what they had. Okay, well, if that picnic hamper had paracord wrapped around the handle like my kettle, what would you think of it then? Why would you put paracord around it? Why would you put paracord around that? I don't know. I haven't. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> but look how good it looks. Does it? Yeah. If, you, if you've got a kettle and it hasn't got shoelaces wrapped around the handle and an engraving, you shouldn't be making tea. Well, I don't. And you don't make tea. <laughs> so that's my point. I rest my case. But in essence, carp fishing is just a picnic with carp, isn't it, really? If you haven't caught anything, you've basically just gone for a picnic. So you know when, like, when people blank and they say, oh, I was, I was camping, you would say... Oh, I was picnicking. Yeah, yeah. I went for a, a 24 hour picnic. I had a fantastic picnic at Spitfire Pole for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's the best picnic I've ever had. A lot of my picnic food is prepped. 
sort of pick, you, you need to prepare for a picnic. Instead of tying rigs at home, you need to cook your food, store it in the freezer, keep it in the picnic box, then you should have enough picnic supplies to last you the full winter. That's what I like to do. People might roll pop-ups, tie rigs, last on the season. Pfft. Just cook your food in advance, store it in the freezer, enough to last you a season's worth of picnicking. I mean, these are advanced picnicking techniques. That would be a great magazine. I'd buy that. Advanced Picnicker. Advanced Picnic. Yeah. Advanced Picnicker. Yeah. Total Picnic. T picnic to World. Picnic World. Good one. Yeah. You've got the weeklies, obviously. Picnic Times, Picnic Mail. Um, improve your picnicking. <laughs> 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 That would be it. Yeah. That would be a good read. Picnic talk. Pic picnicology. <laughs> what have you got? What have you got? <laughs> get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get I it out. I just laughed and farted at the same time. Really? <laughs> yeah. Monkey picnic. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I feel there could be videos and TV programs. <laughs> Monster picnic. How good would that be? Oh my God, we need to do that. Do you reckon you could get it on ITV? Definitely. <laughs> 100%. Hmm. Urban picnic. Urban picnic. That sounds good. I tune in to watch Urban Picnic. Carl and Alex picnicking. Hmm, not sure about that title. Or just Carl and Picnics. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, yeah. I am on fire tonight. You're doing well. Doing well. It's them two ciders. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles. Warm woolen mittens. Brown paper package is why you're laughing. <laughs> well, it's now coming towards the end of that bite time period that I enjoyed yesterday. And I've had no action at all. And to be honest, I don't think it is going to happen. Today is a completely different day. It's, it's, there's not a breath of wind. It's flat, calm eerily quiet there's just no signs of feeding activity whatsoever apart from the tufties which are just relentlessly diving on my spot and if th there were carp feeding in and around that area the tufties wouldn't be there like they are so yeah they're being a bit of a, a bit of a problem and i'm gonna have to have a major major rethink now Yesterday it looked like it was going to be plain sailing and I thought that all I would have to do would be to catch enough fish to get dealt enough hands of cards and eventually I'd get blackjack. But that is not going to be the case at all. Um, yeah, this, this, the story has changed <laughs> completely now. And I'm going to have to have a major rethink if this story is going to have a happy ending. 
and not the sort of happy ending you get in massage parlours. I reeled in my rods and wandered off to see what I could find. Walking the whole of this lake and the one next door revealed nothing. No fish willing to take floaters, nothing showing and nothing feeding in the edge. It seemed like conjuring up a carp would be as impossible as Harry conjuring up a brew. I returned to the swim just in time for the heavens to open. In amongst all the rainfall, I did notice a few shores right at the back of the island, well out of my reach. With the challenge hanging in the balance and with just one night left, my only option was to get as close to the fish as possible, which would mean a move round to the other side. Over there, go on, wind, catch the. Yes. Do you often talk to yourself while spotting? <laughs> Do you notice know them? <laughs> yeah. Everyone does. Get out there, you orange nosed bastard. <sighs> Can't relax spotting me. I keep thinking I'm going to fall in that. Looks like there's claw marks on the bank, like someone's fell in and... <laughs> well, it's been a bit of a frantic couple of hours. Today has been a very frustrating day. And yeah, it was a bit of a rush to, to find a nice area, get the rods in and get set up before darkness fell. But the rods are in the water. I did find one spot one small clear spot in amongst the silt and uh, light eelgrass type weed. Um, it was just big enough to get two rods on. It's just over a hundred yards range. And yeah, it's just, just a nice size to get two rods on. So it's not a big blatant spot. Using exactly the same tactics as before, baited it with probably a couple of kilo of corn and boily. Got two rods fishing on that spot. Didn't have time to find a third spot, but I'm quite happy with where them rods are presented for tonight. And I think the silver lining in all this is because today has been a slow day and because I haven't caught any more fish or had any more uh, hands of cards dealt, it means that Harry hasn't taken any kit off me. And that is good because I think the th first thing he was going to take was probably going to be my uh, brolly. And tonight is meant to be a wet one and tomorrow too. So thankfully I have a brolly for tonight. Um, but going into tonight, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really tense. There's still a lot, a lot to do. If I need, if I can catch two more carp, then I think I think I can do it, but I need to catch obviously one carp to be able to have another uh, hand of cards. And after that, I'm just going to keep asking for another hand of cards until I get blackjack. Tomorrow is the last day, so I can do without most of my kit. So it doesn't matter, we just keep going until all I need is two rods. That's it. You can take everything else off me, just leaving with two rods fishing and a landing net. <laughs> so that, that's all I need to do. In my head, I need to catch two more, two more carp. One carp over £15 to be dealt the next hand. And after that, after that, who knows? Well, a fish is £21 and over. So it's, at the moment, it seems like a bit of a long shot, but it is achievable. So we're just going to have to wait and see what the night brings. The night was disappointingly uneventful and time was seriously running out. It appeared the carp gods were conspiring against me, insisting I had already had my fill.
Well, that is pretty much it for this challenge. Time has almost come to an end. The rods are still in the water, but it is going to need something more than a miracle if I'm to pass this challenge now. It's been so frustrating. It started off so well. I caught them three really nice carp at the beginning of the session. That 26 pounder in particular was awesome. Really enjoyed catching that fish. But after that, it's just been such a massive struggle. The, the second morning, conditions really did deteriorate. It, it just didn't look good for a bite at all. The fish definitely pushed further out and my plan was to, to fish farther out last night. But instead, I moved round onto the end of the wind. And that's not a decision I regret in any way because in, in moving, I have actually been closer to the fish than where I would have been before. But unfortunately, I, I'm still not able to get on them. The fish are showing not only past where I'm fishing, but also sort of round the island there, tucked away behind the island, where it's obviously not, not safe to fish. There's so many snags along there. And if I hook any fish, even, even sort of fishing just past the island a little bit is a bit risky. If they kite right, then it's game over. So yeah, that's pretty much where we are but the past couple of days although i haven't caught any carp it's been some of the best picnicking i've ever experienced and i think harry you can agree with me on that one too it's been a fantastic picnic session and i hope you can join me on the next episode of the picnic where together we'll enjoy some more memorable picnicking moments <laughs> oh by the way it's challenge failed yeah, challenge failed, but a but a big victory for the picnicking. <laughs> <laughs>